Um, hi guys, here's another video um, for Math 3273. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the singular values of a matrix. Okay, so we start with a proposition that so we have an M, M by N matrix. Um, and let's just say that's complex entries. So the entries are in the complex numbers. And the rank of A is going to be R. And we're going to take Q to be um, whichever is smaller, M or N. Okay. Actually, that'll come up later, so you can even just forget about that for now. Okay. But the proposition says that both A star A and A A star are positive semi-definite and they have the same non-zero eigenvalues. Since they're positive semi-definite, we can write them as they're all, all the non-zero ones are positive and we can write them as, um, you know, the squares of some numbers. Okay. So um, the content of this is to prove that A star A and A A star have the same non-zero eigenvalues, one, and, um, also to show that they're both positive semi-definite. Okay, so first we'll show that they have the same non-zero eigenvalues. Okay, so the key is to show that if lambda is non-zero, then a star a minus lambda, the nullity of that is the same as the nullity of a a star minus lambda. Okay, so take a basis for the null space of a star a minus lambda. Okay, call it u1 up to u, uh, n was a bad choice here. Let's say u1 up to uk. It's a basis for the null space of a star a minus lambda. In other words, u1 up to uk are eigenvectors for a star a with eigenvalue lambda. Okay. And then now we claim that um, AU1 up to AUK are all linearly independent. Okay. Um, the reason for this essentially is because say they weren't linearly independent, then we would have um, C1 AU1 plus, da, 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 plus CK AUK equals zero. And we'd have a c1 u1 plus da, 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 plus ck uk equals zero. Okay. Now here's a vector such that a times the vector is zero. So this vector is in um, the null space of a, and it's also um, this vector is also in the null space of a star a minus lambda. Okay, but 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 if I do um, a star a times this vector, I get zero. So I'll call this vector u, and a star a u is just the zero vector, which is not the same as lambda u unless u equals zero. Okay, so this has to be since u is in the null space of a star a minus lambda, this has to be the same as lambda u which means that since lambda is not zero, u must be zero. So u is zero. Now since u, this vector, this is the vector u. Since u is zero and u and up to uk are linearly independent, that's by our hypothesis that they give a basis. Um, that means all the ci's are zero. So our vector is a1, au1 up to auk, we're all linearly independent. And this is where we assume, this is where we needed that the eigenvalue is non-zero. Okay. Um, not only that, but a u i, each one is in the null space of a a star minus lambda. To see that, well, um, to see that a a star, look, a a star times a u i, let's just a times a star a u i, let's just a times lambda u i, that's just lambda a u i telling us that AUI is an eigenvector for AA star with eigenvalue lambda. Okay. Um, now immediately, those two, th those two facts combined tell us that the null space of AA star minus lambda um, has dimension at least 
like greater than the dimension, greater than or equal to the dimension of a star a minus lambda, the null space of that. Okay, um, but the same argument, kind of like in in, in reverse, shows you that uh, the null space of a star a minus lambda has at least the dimension of the null space of a a star minus lambda. Um, just to reverse the argument, starting from a a null space of a a star minus lambda. Okay. And, and all this shows that a a star and a star a have the same non-zero eigenvalues, and you like, but the same um, multiplicity. Okay. Um, so therefore, we can write them as uh, sigma one squared, sigma two squared, up to sigma r squared. Same ones for both. Okay, and now we. Oh yeah. So the last thing is to show that a a star and a star a are positive semi-definite and that just follows from our lemma because if we look at x star times a star a x um, if this is greater than or equal to zero for all x then that would mean that um, a star a would be positive semi-definite but x star a star a x is just the norm of a x squared which is always greater than or equal to zero because it's because of the properties of the norm. So that tells us that a star a is positive semi-definite and a similar argument works for a a star. Okay, so that completes the proof of the proposition. Okay, a and now we can define the singular values of a. Well, we find the, eigen the non-zero eigenvalues of a star a. Um, we call, we call them sigma 1 squared up to sigma r squared, and the singular values of A are going to be sigma 1 down to sigma r, and then um, we need a few more just to fill out, um, just filled out by zeros. So sigma r plus 1 up to sigma q are going to be 0. Remember that q is just the minimum, the minimum of m and n. Okay, and we order them in a way where um, the sigmas are non-decreasing. Or sorry, I should say non-increasing, yes. Okay, and that's the definition of the singular values. Okay, in the next video, we'll, um, we'll prove that we can factor A in such a way that using, we can factor A using the singular values. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.